Hi, I'm Angie. I want to welcome you to National Indoor RV Centers, where we specialize in the sales, storage, service, and detailing of only high-end, new, and used coaches. So basically, we do it all. Hi, I'm Angie with National Indoor RV Centers, and today we're going to be continuing my RVing 101 series. We'll be covering something that most of you will consider if you're going to RV, and that's tow packages. There is a lot of information that you need to know before you consider towing a vehicle or flat towing a vehicle behind your coach. The first thing we need to determine when planning to tow a vehicle is what is the max towing capacity of your motorhome. Almost every motorhome on the receiver hitch, you're gonna have a data tag that will tell you what the max capacity is. On this particular coach, it's 5,000 pounds. Now that we've determined the maximum towing capacity of our motorhome, we get to do the fun part. We get to spend more money, <laughs> and we get to start shopping for our tow vehicle, or towed as us RVers like to refer to it as. When choosing a tow vehicle, or towed, uh, one of the most important things that you need to find out from the manufacturer, from your owner's manual, if it can be flat towed or four on the four. So these, this customer here decided to go with the Chevy Equinox. Um, it is 4,400 pounds. The motorhome will tow 5, 000, up to 5,000 pounds, so, so they're gonna be fine. Now, there are hundreds of vehicles that you can choose from, but just make sure, double check, triple check, that it can be flat towed. As you're shopping for your towed, if you're unsure of the gross vehicle weight, you can always find that right inside the driver's side door jam. Once you've chosen your tow vehicle, you now need to choose which towing system you want to use. And there's like there's a lot of options on the vehicles. There are also several options on your towing systems. Here at National Indoor RV Centers, we typically use Blue Ox and Roadmaster. So here is completed tow package. So our customers chose to go with the Blue Ox application. You can see we've got the airlines for the tow vehicles, the brake lines, the safety cables, the tow bar itself. It's a 10,000 pound tow bar. So you can see with their max towing capacity on the motorhome of 5,000 pounds and their tow vehicle it weighs 4,400 pounds. So they've chosen a larger margin of safety than others. Now the tow bars come in a 7,500 pound tow bar, 10,000 pound tow bar, and a 15,000 pound tow bar. If you'd like to know what National Indoor RV Centers recommends for your tow bar rating with the weight of your vehicle, give us a call, we'll be happy to help you. Um, if you are towing a 9,000 pound tow vehicle with a 10,000 pound tow bar, it's sort of like running nine amps continuously on a 10 amp breaker, it will eventually fail. Believe me, at National Indoor RV Centers, we do more complete tow package installations than anyone in the nation. We also redo core installations from other dealers at our locations as well. Let's talk supplemental braking systems. What are they? So let me see if I can explain this. So we've got a 4,400 pound tow vehicle, or towed. When I apply the brakes in the coach, I don't want the coach's brakes to be responsible for slowing down the coach plus this 4,400 pound towed and then putting all that tension on your tow bar. So you wanna have a supplemental braking system so that when you apply the brakes in the coach, they will in tandem apply the brakes in the vehicle. So do you need a supplemental braking system? The answer from National Indoor RV Centers is absolutely yes. All but 10 states require it. So unless you're going to avoid those 10 states, just put the supplemental braking system on. Um, we'd rather err on the side of caution. And also think about it, the tow bar is meant to tow. So it's meant to pull the towed. Without a supplemental braking system, you're basically, the coach is gonna be stopping and the towed is gonna be pushing against the tow bar, creating a lot of tension, and it's just an unsafe situation you want to avoid. Let me describe what each of these cables are for. So this thick one here is sort of like our umbilical cord, that's what they call it. It's the tow cord that's gonna go into your seven-way 
So this is gonna make it so when you uh, turn on your brakes, the lights in the, the tow vehicle will come on as well, your turn signal, and your headlights. Then we've got the breakaway cord, so that if you come separated, this will pull out. We've got our safety cables here, and at National Indoor RV Centers, we recommend that those are crossed. And then we have the airline for our supplemental braking system. Let me show you a completed install on a brand new vehicle, and then I'm going to take you across the way and show you how the sausage is made. Because if I were gonna look at this as just not knowing any better, open the hood of my car, I can't tell that we've done anything here at National Indoor RV Centers and a full tow package base plate has been installed and you'll see that there's no wires or there's no evidence to me other than you can see the, the supplemental braking system right here that we've been under the hood at all. Inside the car, near the brake pedal, you can see the other part of the supplemental braking system. So this is where the sausage is made, or this is where National Indoor RV Centers works its magic so that once the whole tow bar complete installation is done, you'll never know that we touched it. Now you can see we've got the bumper removed here, we've got the skid plate removed, and this is the base plate for those of you that have never seen one exposed. This is what your tow bar is gonna hook into. And remember that each base plate is unique to that vehicle's year, make, and model. This is a brand new vehicle that we're putting this on here. You can see we've already started to install the wiring for the tow system. Now, by the time we're done, this will all be in the original wiring loom or we will put it in our own. So this will look as factory as possible. Below is everything you need for your supplemental braking system. Now inside the box, this is our Air Force One system. This is if your coach doesn't come equipped with the airline um, already there. Most late model chassis will have that on there already. Otherwise you will need this tank assembly for the supplemental braking system on the coach side. Everything else, all that wiring is all for the supplemental braking system on the towed side. Now that you've seen a little bit of the behind the scenes installation, let's head back over to the completed installation. I'm gonna show you how easy it is to hook up and disconnect your towed. All right, so we're ready to hit the road. Let me go ahead and show you how easy this is to hook up this tow system. So these are your tow pins that attach to your base plate. So I'm gonna go ahead and put them in first. And you just pull that back and turn till it locks in. Those are nice and locked in. Now we're gonna go to the blue walk. So you wanna bring this up until it's vertical. Now I pulled the car close enough um, that I think it's gonna work. You might have to adjust it a couple of times, but you do have telescoping arms, so, so you don't have to be exact. Then you're going to push that apart, take it down here, do one at a time, and it just telescopes out, thread that pin through and we're gonna go ahead and put the locking. Now this is an accessory that you can add that I recommend that you add. You can get from National Indoor RV Centers and that will just lock into place there. Match this one up. There we go. Next up are the safety cables. And we want to make sure we crisscross those. I'm going to take them across the top and hook those in. Super easy. And then we've got our umbilical cord and our airline. So we're going to go ahead and put that in first. Attach that, bring that across the top. Nice and easy. Now for the umbilical cord or your light um, system. So you wanna make sure that this is on the top, that goes up top, and same on the reverse side. There's a little line there, and that will make sure they both go in this direction. So, so we'll just lift this up. Now 
And then let's do our supplemental breakaway cable. So you want your tow bar assembly to be uh, pretty much the same height your receiver here with the height of your car. So if you've got an extreme situation where it's either higher or lower and you've got a big angle with your tow bar, you probably need to get a receiver adapter so you can raise and lower that so that it's more um, one level. Now that we have everything hooked up, there's just a few more things I need to do. I need to verify that the lights are working. This is where it's helpful to have a co-pilot so that you can test the brake lights, the turn signals, and your marker lights. And then I will get in the car and put it in neutral. That's according to the owner's manual when you're flat towing. All right, so once you're ready to go, there's just two things you wanna do. You can either have uh, your co-pilot watching as you slowly put your coach in drive and pull forward to make sure the tow car is following and the tires are rolling. Or if you're both in the driver's seat, you can start moving forward slowly and turn to the left or the right to see if those tires are following and rolling with you. I'm gonna drive around the building to show you how easy it is. Basically, your tow vehicle is going to follow the coach. So if you clip the curb with your coach, you're gonna clip it with your tow vehicle. So again, just like I always say, watch those mirrors, watch it really closely. If you're getting too close to the curb, stop, slow down, and avoid that curb so that your tow vehicle doesn't do it. And then the most important thing you have to know, you have to remember, tow vehicles are meant to be towed. You cannot back up with your tow vehicle attached to the coach. Before you know it, your coach will be into the bumper. So if you get in a jam, it's not hard to, tech, to unhook. You just unhook, get your car out of the way, back your coach up, but do not try, even if you're going a foot, do not try to back up with your tow vehicle attached. Now that we're back from our trip, I'm gonna go ahead and follow the owner's manual for flat towing. And I'm going to take the car out of neutral, put it into park and set the park brake. All right, so now that we're done with our trip and we're dropping our coach off at National Indoor RV Center so we can store it, and we wanna take our tow vehicle home, I'm gonna show you how easy it is to disconnect everything. So I put the car in park and set the park brake. Now I'm ready to disconnect. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect the airline for our supplemental braking system first. Then I'm gonna do the umbilical cord here. I'm gonna disconnect the breakaway cable. Now I'm disconnecting this away from the breakaway plunger. This needs to be installed at all times. If you try to drive your toad with this out, the brakes are going to engage, it's not gonna work. So the plunger stays in at all times. I'm just gonna disconnect the other end of the breakaway cable. Now for my safety cables. So I'm just going to uncross these. Now I can disconnect those and I can keep everything in a bin. Um, that's what some of my customers do. That's what I like to do. Or we've got a cover that goes over the whole tow bar and you can kind of wrap these around once you bring it up and keep it all covered if you want to do it. So it's just personal preference. All right, now to get our pins out, we're going to unlock them and just unthread that. I go ahead and just put that on so that you don't lose your parts. Locks in place. You're gonna pull this up and then you're just gonna push down here and that will release the telescope 
and go do the other one. So unlock. Just take that out. Okay, and then go ahead and just put those together. Lift that up and you're going to telescope it back. Bring it up till it's vertical. Now you can take this either way, to your right or to your left. So once you push it down, and then you can just push them together and put your cover on. All right, now we just have to remove our toe pins. Again, I like to put everything in a plastic container so all my toe equipment is together when I go to leave. It makes it really easy. I'm not searching for anything. As you can see, that was super easy. I did it in dress and heels and nails. I don't recommend any of them, <laughs> but you can totally do it. It's easy to do. And like I said earlier, no one does more complete toe package installs and national indoor RV centers like all RVing needs. We can take care of you. So give us a call, 469-277-1330. Thanks so much for watching today and look forward to more RVing 101 videos coming your way soon.